Hello and welcome to Very Simple Tips. In this video, we are going to see how to make a snake game using only HTML5 canvas. So this will be the game that we are going to develop. We have a snake and foot. We have four controls, left, right, down and up. And the aim is to eat the food and increase the score. If we eat the food, the score will increase and the snake will get bigger. Okay, so the game over contains the five hitting self and uh, hitting any of the four sides of the canvas. Okay, that's it. Let's jump right into the code. We will be having four files, the index.html file, the script.js file and the style.css file. Let's, you know, we'll be using jQuery. So let's start with HTML. Sorry. Okay. The, the, this is the this is a basic HTML5 template. Let's sorry. Okay, let's style this stuff. We have included the style.css file and just before ending the body in the script tag with source first in group jQuery, then we'll have to include the script file script.js we're ready to go let's let's add a div with id container and let's have a canvas let's give it an idea of canvas itself yeah let's uh width 600 and a height of say 400 and we'll have to have another score div or let's say span and score and let's create a b tag id score let's start it with zero yeah it's fine i think we have the html ready but you know let's go and see it okay yep inspect yeah we have the canvas okay let's style it let's uh, give the container um, text align center Let's give the canvas background color. Say black. Yeah, that will be better. Let's close this. Okay, now let's go and see. Yes, everything is set. Now we can start scripting now. So let's see how we can draw something into a canvas. Just a basic thing. Let's put everything in a document already. Sorry. Okay, let's select the canvas first and we've stored in a variable called canvas and set lower of its id is canvas of zero that's how we select the canvas so in order to make any drawing to the canvas we'll have to select the 2d context of the canvas it's not very hard let's say word or ctx the short form of context you'll see this everywhere yeah canvas dot the method used is get context of 2d Am I recording? Yeah. Okay. That's how we select the context of the canvas. And using that, this object, this CTS object, we are going to draw into the canvas. Let's uh, draw a simple rectangular into the canvas first. Okay. To make sure it's working. So let's give a style, which means the color. Let's say red. And to draw a rectangle, we'll have to use a method called fill rect. Okay. And which accepts four parameters. First one is the x position, second one y position, and the width and height of the rectangle. X position is nothing but the distance from the left side of the uh, for the uh, left side of the canvas, and y position is nothing but the distance from the top of the canvas. So we'll get a point there with an x, x and y. And if we want to draw a rectangle, we'll uh, you know mention the height and width of the rectangle. Let's draw one, say x fifty. 100 so mm, let's draw a square let's see yes we have got a rectangle at the position of x 100 y 200 and a width and height of 10 by 10 so that's how we draw a rectangle into the canvas you know our in our game a snake is made up of multiple blocks of these type of rectangles see here yeah 
let's add some more blocks, right? So, oh, let's declare the snake itself. Snake, it's nothing, snake is nothing but an array of objects where each object carries an X and Y position. Uh, there's no need to say the height and width uh, in these objects or the height and width in these objects because that will be common. So X, let's say 50, Y 100. Let's add two more blocks of 90 and Y position will be 80. And let's declare the var snake width equal to snake height equal to 10. That'll be easy for us. Okay, now we'll have to draw this snake using these two lines of code. Or just make everything or put everything inside a function called draw snake. And to draw this array, we'll have to use a loop first. So let's use the dollar dot each of jQuery and pass the snake array. Next, a method the function which passes index and value the object itself. Now let's paste the function, the two lines of code, CTX or field style, and instead of using this, we can use the value from the objects, which is value.x, value.y, first is snake width and snake height. Now let's see, nothing is happening. That's why that's because we didn't call a function. Okay, let's call it here. Okay, we have a snake here with three blocks of rectangles. You know, we can't identify, we can't differentiate between the blocks. So let's, uh, you know, add some border to the snake like this. It'd be fun. To do that, it's called a stroke, like the fill style, it's called the stroke style. White and the method to draw the stroke is something like the fill rect itself. Instead of fill rect, we'll have to use stroke rect. And that also acts as four parameters. So we can copy this. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Yes, we have got the strokes. Okay. So in this game, we are considering this or the first object as head and the, and anything after that, all the ob objects after that as body. I'll tell you the reason just now. Okay. So what's pending is let's move the snake first okay so in order to do that you know move the snake uh, in an interval we'll have to start a loop oh, no no start an interval set interval function so let's write the set interval function for that set interval that's uh, we'll have so many things inside this so we'll write a new function for that game loop every one second we haven't defined this function yet. Let's define the function. Sorry, game loop. Yes, and let's move this draw snake inside this. And let's see what ha what's happening. Actually, nothing's happening. You know, nothing special is happening there because every time we run the loop, you know, let's check whether the loop is running or not. Okay, console.log. Loop running. So every second loop is running, but we're just drawing over and over and over again. So now let's move the snake. Let's write the logic for moving the snake. Let's write a function for that. Function move snake. Okay, in order to implement this. I have told you before that we are going to consider the snake as two parts, a head and the entire block after that will be the body. It's because whenever we press some keys, like the right, left or down or up arrow keys, whenever we press one, the only thing that moves with the logic is the head. And all the other blocks, which is the body blocks, will be inheriting its X and Y positions just from the block just before its position. For example, this guy will inherit his position from the head and this guy will inherit its X and Y position from this guy. So, so you know, drawing the body is very easy. We don't want to use any logic there. Just We will just write logic to move the head and all the others will follow a pattern. 
okay so now let's try to move the snake down if we haven't defined the key down functions yet okay we'll write that later but let's first let's declare some constants constants up or say left equals left is 37 the keys that we are going to use and up is 38 okay now this will be left up then right then down okay this will be 40 this will be 39 these are the keys that we are going to use to control the snake so let's declare a variable key called key pressed we haven't defined functions yet but let's say we have pressed the down arrow key when the game starts and uh, we are going to call the move snake function here just before drawing the snake move snake okay move snake so in order to move the snake we'll have to use the each function because we are going to move everything the head the body the logic is different but still we want to move everything snake function index form a value so logic is different so we'll have to check whether it's head if index is zero it is head if else it's the body it's all the blocks inside the body then we'll have to check for the for the head we'll have to check whether the key pressed equals equals down if the key is down what are we going to do if the key pressed is down the, the snake has to go down how do we do that we can increase the y position of the head object's y position so that the head will go down 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 okay like that so let's do that snake array index that will be zero so we are updating the y position not going to do anything to the x position because the key press is down and it has to go down the x position which is this distance will say stay same but y position will increase as simple as that say value dot x plus say let's uh, declare a variable for that instead of you know writing 10 or 20 or values like that or let's say block size equals 10 mm, we can use it here so whenever the key press is down we are just increasing the y position with the existing position plus block size and this is just happening for the head so let's see what's happening here refresh okay something is happening but you know our y hasn't also oh, this is y i'm sorry okay let's see yep our head is moving but see this do you see this because you know our canvas is not getting cleared that's why this is happening that's the rule of the canvas every time if you want to draw something new to the canvas if you want you should clear the canvas so just before drawing you can clear the canvas so let's write a function for that let's call it first okay let's here function clear canvas the method is similar to the clear rect i mean fill rect it's called clear rect the entire canvas is considered as a rectangle this also accepts four parameters x and y position you know the point where we should start the the clear clearing process and the rectangles width and height so let's say we want to clear from the first pixel to say end a canvases width and canvas dot height that's how we clear the end a canvas starting from zero zero to canvas with height okay let's see what's happening there okay our head is moving the body stays there because we haven't done anything to the body okay that's working fine so now let's see how to move the body like i said in order to move the body it should get the all the or the previous exposition of the blog just before that so in order to do that we'll have to update you know we'll have to store the old x and y positions just before updating the previous position so let's you know, do it somewhere here just uh, you know before that let's okay all decks zero all y zero let's copy it it's not required but still like i said this all x and all y 
should be updated for all the blocks, you know, for the head and all the body blocks. Why, why are we updating for the head? Because the block just comes after the head is going to, this one is going to accept the altered by portion of the head. That's why we are accepting. We are writing the code for head also. So we are not going to write anything inside this if and else loop. Let's write it above that. Snake of index dot old x equals value dot x. So just before assigning the new value, we are updating the old value. Same for y. Okay, we have updated the old x and old y. So now for the body, snake of index dot x equals to snake of, like I said, index minus one, the block just before that dot all x. Same for the y position. Y. Let's see how it works. Yeah, we have got the snake moving down. Everything working fine. So now let's write the conditions for right, left, and down, up. In order to do that, we'll have to listen for the event, key down event, dollar off document dot so we key down event no no sorry 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 function event oh let's call e we already have uh, defined the key pressed variable there e dot which to you know to make sure it's working that's console dot log that key pressed Whenever key is pressed, control shift R. I'm going to go down key. Say 40 came, 37, 38, 39. Yeah, it's working fine. Let's go and uh, write the logic to change the direction of head. Else if key pressed equals equals. Let's write for up. So if we want to move the snake up we will change the y direction y itself y position itself but unlike you know going down for going down we have increased y for this time we are going to decrease y position so say snake of index dot y value dot y minus block size okay now let's write the conditions for right and left right g h d yeah so in order to move the snake to the right, we'll have to increase x position so that it goes from left to right. So this is not x, I have to change the x position. This is x, we're going to increase, so plus. And let's copy this. So if it's uh, left, we're going to decrease the x position. Control V and this will be minus. Let's see how it works. I'm going to press the right arrow key. Yeah, it's working fine. I'm going to press the up button. Yeah, working fine. Left, working fine. Down, yes. We have got every key is working. Okay, let's keep it like that. Or let's write some conditions here. Uh, if I try to press the up arrow key, see, the game breaks. Or sorry, the snake go up. So that's not you know allowed in a game like that, like this. It shouldn't go up if it's going to the right and if i press the left arrow key the snake goes left and if i press the right arrow key now it goes right so that's not allowed in here so we'll have to write some conditions for that too so in here just before you know just uh, you know don't blindly uh, assign the key press e dot which to the key press just write a function for check key is allowed let's write a function for that and pass e dot which let's define the function over here function set law we can call this the temp key okay now let's uh, get key temporary variable now we want to check we want all these conditions here or oh, I'll write that if temp key is down then 
we'll have to check the keep if the keypress is down we'll have to check the already uh, the the snake is not already moving to the moving down which means the key pressed the already pressed key the key pressed if it's not equal to up then return the temp key otherwise let's return the key pressed itself do you get the idea say the uh, snake was going up then this guy pressed the down key now we don't want the snake to go down immediately we cannot allow that so now we're checking that guy the the key that got pressed was the down arrow key so now we'll have to check the key that was pressed before if it's not up then return the down arrow key itself assign it to the key pressed don't it, it doesn't matter otherwise we'll have to return the old key itself okay now or we could you know assign the key pressed here itself that's, that's not a good thing let's write the conditions for the other keys now else if temp key is up the key he pressed is up so we have to make sure the snake was not going the the key pressed just before was not down now let's write for right and left so the key press is left but to make sure the key the snake was not moving right and if the key press was right have to make sure the snake was not going left and we'll return the key okay let's call the function and it will get assigned to there this key will be signed to the key press let's see snake is coming down i'm going to press the up arrow key yes nothing happening the snake is still going down i'm going to change the right now i'm going to press the left arrow key okay the snake is going right now i'm going to press it the up arrow, now i'm going to press the down arrow key snake is still going okay i'm going to press the right uh, right arrow key yes everything working fine okay now let's 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 write the logic for you know, food okay so let's like the snake let's define a food object food is just one so we are not going to create an array it's also like to be a rectangle with x and y positions say x position 200 and y position also 200 and we need an eaten flag eaten false when it is going to be placed for the first time it's not eaten by the snake so let's draw the food let's write a function for drawing the food called draw food move snake draw snake okay function draw food so everything will be same like we did for the this thing what i'm sorry uh, the snake yeah let's change the color to yellow it's not value dot x it would be like food dot x and food dot y snake with and snake hat yeah that's fine let's see what we have here yes okay it's there now okay we have one more thing pending see if i am pressing any other key the game crashes the snake you know reduces to one one block why is it this it is uh, you know we have not handled the key press for other keys so we'll have to check we are just allowing the user to press these four keys so let's check that if a dot which i'm sorry if dollar dot in array of a dot which let's create an array here and let's pass down comma up comma left comma right not equal to minus one Okay. so now we're checking when the key is down we are making sure that the key pressed is any of these four keys otherwise don't do anything so i'm going to press space okay i can press any key i want nothing will happen 
Okay. Now let's write the logic of eating the food. Come on, come on, come on. Let's just check whether anything is happening. Nothing is happening, right? Yeah. Let's see. Let's write the logic for eating the food. So we can write, if you want, you can write when drawing the snake or just moving the snake. So let's write here by drawing the snake. So how are we going to do that? I forgot to tell you that. We'll have to check. So uh, the one important thing that I want to tell is everything, every single thing, every single action that's happening is just to the head. If it's a game over, it's uh, it, if it's eating food, everything is, you know, just for the head. We are checking against the head. So the head is going to eat the food. The head is going to, you know, hit the other parts of the body, and the head is going to hit the four corners of the canvas, four sides of the canvas. So let's check if while writing, while drawing the snake, we're checking if index equals zero. So we're checking it's the, uh, you know, head. If index equals zero, if Let's write a function did eat food and let's uh, pass the current position of the head which is value dot x and value dot y if did eat food. Yeah. Let's write the function. Function did eat food and we have passed x and y position of the head of the snake. So now we want to check whether the x and y position of the head of the snake is equal to the x and y position of the foot. So if that's equal, I mean, if both are equal, we can say that the snake has eaten the foot. So it's simple. Return foot dot x equal to equal to x, and then foot dot y equal to equals y. That's how we do that. We're checking foot dot x is x. And put it y equal to y. Let's do a console there. Yay, food. Okay. So I'm going to change the speed of the game a little bit faster. Say 300. Okay. You see the console? We are, yeah. We have got one yay food. Let's see what is happening again. Okay, yeah, that's working fine. So what uh, what else is pending? Yeah, when the snake eats the food, what we want to do is increase the score. We don't have a score yet, so let's add one. What score equals zero? Just increase the score. Score plus plus, and update the score in the score div. Uh, that's not a div. It's uh, yeah, it's id score. Update the value there. Hash score dot val score let's see whether it's working or not here is we're going to display the score no that's not working let me reload it that's the problem sorry that's just a span so the or uh, that's just a b so there won't be any val value attribute that will be text okay now you can study some jquery also Yep, score is increasing. Let's go and hit it again. Yep, it's working fine. Now, one thing pending is, you know, we'll have, ooh, what happened there? Oh, what was that? Okay. So now, one thing pending is, you know, making the snake bigger. So how are we going to do that? So whenever the snake eats the food, we'll have to push one object to the last position of the snake. And its x and y will be say the the body's logic will come here. Its x and y position will be the all x and all y of the last position of the last object, the x and y of the last object. So let's, let's call that that's by make snake bigger. Did you put the canvas? Okay, let's try here. Function make snake bigger. Okay. Like I said, snake dot push, you want to push an object into the array where the x position will be snake of how do we find the last object of the snake? Snake of 
snake dot length minus one. So that's how we get the last index of the snake. Minus one dot all x. And y will be same. This will be y. Let's see whether it's working or not. Yeah, now we have four blocks of snake. Yes, now we have five. And now we have six. Okay, that's also done. Now, just before re-rolling the food, let's consider the game over conditions. That, that's you know, more easier than handling the proportion of the food again. So, there are two ways that this game can be. It's like self-hitting the snake, you know, hitting the snake by itself or hitting the four sides of the canvas. So let's first write the um, conditions. First check the condition that the head hitting its own body. Okay. We can do it here itself. Where was that? Yeah. Just before they did food. If collided of we can press the same y zero x the heads current y and x and y questions. Say console of law game over. Let's write the function collided. That accepts of an x and y position. How, how are we going to do that? We should check whether the snake's head collided with any of the x and y combination of x and y of the body parts. So in order to do that, we have to write the filter function and check whether yeah I'll, I'll write that I'll turn like snake dot filter function so this is just opposed to the dot logic function first we'll pass the in value then the index we'll again return we have to make sure that we are not checking the head heads itself so we'll have to check index not equal to zero and then yes value dot x equals x and then value dot y equal to y so so we'll get as a result of that we'll get an array this snake dot filter function will you know uh, will return something for this example an array of objects itself so we'll have to check that arrays length if that that array's length is greater than zero, then it's a game over. This only returns an array if the value dot or x equal to x. So the head hits another body, another you know blocks x and in the body y. So the same position. If the head is at the same position of any other body components x and y position, then we'll have to consider that as a game over condition. Let's try that. We made a console.log there, so we'll see that. Let's make the snake grow bigger. Now, if I am going to do that, yes, we have got the game over condition. Yes, it's working fine. So now we haven't written the game over condition. Just uh, you know, just before that, we'll write the condition for the next game over. That's hitting the four walls. So in order to check whether the head has hit the left, uh, you know, corner of the canvas, we'll have to check whether or, or x is less than zero if x is less than zero the head is here so that's a game over condition or the x is greater than canvas dot width if the head is here we'll have to consider that also as a game over condition if x is greater than canvas dot width that's how we get the you know, width of the canvas or we have two more you know, corners or sides, top and bottom. So now the, the position that we want to check is y. Now we'll have to check the y position is greater than, sorry, less than zero. If it's less than zero, it's going up, it's minus. And if it's greater than zero, greater than the canvas height, it's also a game over condition. So y less than zero or y greater than canvas dot height. That's also a game over condition. 
So let's refresh. Yeah, game over. We got a game over. Yeah, that's also game over. Let's go down. I want to make. Yeah, that was a game over. Let's go right. Oh my god. Yes, that's also working. Now let's write the game over function. Call a function game over. We'll have to stop the loop. Let's write it at the very end. Function game over. So we'll have to stop the loop first. So in order to do that, you now we should by you know we store this thing to a variable and log game. Okay. Now we'll have to now to stop stop the loop. You should use set in you know, clear interval of path variable and then stop. Okay. That's working fine. The loop has stopped running. If you look at here. There's some bugs still. Okay. You see it? the yeah, it has stopped running. So now what's pending is the placement of the foot. Okay, where do we do that? Yep. Mm, draw foot, yeah. We had a flag called Ethan Fox. And in the you know draw foot functionality we are calling just before drawing the snake. So we can write the logic here. So if food, no, why? So in order to do that, we'll have to update, you know, if the snake has, uh, uh, if the food got eaten by snake, we'll have to update the food.eaten flag. That's why we kept it there, food.eaten equal to true. Then every time when we draw the food, draw food, we'll have to check if food.eaten equals true, then only, only then we'll have to get a new position for the foot. Otherwise, it will be, you know, the old X and Y positions. Say foot equals, we're just updating the foot <coughs> object, excuse me. <coughs> get, let's write the function for that, position for foot. So no need to pass anything as a parameter. Okay, now let's write it, let's see here. Function, get new position for foot. Okay, now this is, you know, it's somewhat difficult, yeah. Let's, uh, in order to do that, we, when the food got eaten by the snake, we'll have to find a new position anywhere in the canvas, and we'll have to make sure that position is not overriding the positions of the snake. So, we'll have to make sure the food's new position is, new position x is not equal to any of the x positions of the snake, and its y position is not equal to any of the y positions of the snake. Okay, so let's, uh, in order to do that, we'll have to get the, all the x's from uh, snake and all the y's from the snake. So let's x array and y array. And let's do a dollar dot each of snake. It's current position, snake, function, index, comma, value. I'm going to push the value of x in x array and value dot y in y array to get the current x's and y's. So in order to do that, I'll have to check whether the array doesn't have. But make sure that dollar dot in array of say value dot x in the x array not equal to minus one. Otherwise, we'll get duplicates of x's and y's in that array. We don't want that. If you want, you can keep that, but you know, that's not well. In array of value dot y in what? Oh, okay, y array. Oh, sorry. I'll have to move this to. Okay, sorry. This is another condition. If the value dot x is not in there, then push. x array dot push that you know value dot x and if total dot in array of y equal to equal to minus one then i'm going to y array dot push 
uh, dot y. y. So I have the x and y positions here, all the x and all the y positions of the snake there. Now I want to check, I want to create a new x and new y position for the food and, uh, and then I want to check whether that x and y is not present in these x and y arrays. Okay. So let's uh, call a new function for that. You know, let's uh, call x, y and uh, x, y equals get empty x, y. And we're going to pass this x array and the y array. Let's write this function just after this. Okay, in order to do that, we have to generate a new x and y positions, and then we have to check whether that's in the x array, y array, we have code here. So new x equals, let's write a function to get a random number, and that random number should be uh, canvas dot width, it should be between the canvas dot width minus 10, because if if let's say if we we just pass in canvas dot width and uh, say zero, if it's uh, canvas dot width is six hundred, if it's placed at if it's x is uh, far would five hundred and if it's x y also is five hundred, it will be positioned outside the canvas. So that's why the we are just passing six hundred minus ten to five ninety, and what we want is a multiple of ten. Same for the height. This logic might seem difficult, but now if you look at it one or two times you'll get it we're going to use a recursive function also so i'm going i'm not going to define this random number function i will just take it from the repository it's just you know generating a function generating a number between two numbers that we give and it is making it, it's making sure that this that's a number uh, between that yes so this canvas to give random number. Maximum is you know here 600 minus 10, 590, and it should be a multiple of 10. So that just return the x and y. Now we have to check this new x and y together is not present in the array that we have passed here, which is the this is the current position of the snake, the body so it's, or body or head or whatever. If dollar dot in array of new x comma in x sorry x array equal to equal to minus one which is the x is not there now let's check dollar dot in array of if y also it's not there in the existing portions of the y array then we can return new x y or just an object so I'm going to write return x as new x and y see new y and e10 false so this one this new x and new y will be a random number between the you know 10 of 0 the canvas width and your y will be can, uh, between 0 and canvas height. So we get a position and we are checking that if that x and that y combined, so we have not equals minus 1. If that x and that y is not present in the new x and the x array and y array, then that position is fine. Just, that, just return it. Okay. Else, we'll have to call this function again. So that's a recursive function empty x and y and we have to pass the x array and y array that's how we calculate the new empty position of this function is very difficult to understand but if you you know uh, see the code and uh, read it like two or three times you'll get it i'll just explain once again the else position the the, the else loop mm. if this is false if the x and y are already there in the x array, then we can't, you know, put the foot there because the snake is already there. We can't, you know, draw the foot over the snake. 
So we'll just call this function again. Okay, so that's how we get the new positions of the food. Okay, now we'll have to return this x, y. So new position has been set for the food. Where did we call this? Okay, so new position the object got updated. If food is in this true, the food will get updated and the new position will be returned. Let's see how it goes. Okay, what? why are is not defined? There. Okay, there's an equal to here. Give me a question for food. What is that? This is not equal to. It's a comma. Okay. What did happen? I didn't do that. Oh my god, we got another error. What is that now? Can I want create property push up undefined? Why I don't push? Where is it? Why? So this wire is off. Oh, what is that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's my bad. Equals an empty array. <laughs> okay. So now let's see. Okay. Here yeah, we got the new position of the foot. Oh, it's getting updated. It's working fine. The score is getting updated. The snake is getting bigger. Everything working fine. So, like a basic implementation is done. Well, I think that's all for today. Oh, we didn't write the game over a lot. Where's the game over function? Game over. It's right here. Let's write an alert function to say to inform that the game is over. Yeah, that's also working fine. So that's all. I hope you like this. If you like this, you know, like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel for more simple, interesting videos like this. And share it with your friends. Okay, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye.